Hey, welcome to the CYF course. Today we will speak about how to bring changes in our churches, in our ministries, when we realize something new and we want to implement it in the way we are working with children, with the teenagers. And we need to do it with wisdom. And this is what we want to share with you this afternoon. We base that on what we did in our own church in Yverdon, Switzerland, a few years ago when God asked us to be involved in leading the children and teenagers ministry. And of course, we had a lot of vision because at the time it was just um, usual Sunday school with lessons. Um, we need to find the right curriculums. Uh, we often need to find new workers. And uh, we wanted to implement a new dynamic based on the spiritual capacity of children and uh, the teamwork and different um, aspects that uh, would revolutionize the way we were doing this. So first, I think it's important to work on ourselves. Why do we want to bring change? Is it something that is personal? Are we bitter towards the church because they don't understand? Or towards the leadership? Are we arrogant with our vision? I remember some people always talking about children. When they open their mouths, you already know what they want to say. And at one point, it, it's no more constructive because it becomes your own personal challenge, your cause that you are promoting and defending. And it's very important that the Lord can first uh, go through our life and show us if there is no personal hurt or personal bitterness that is behind our motivation. It is so important. You know, a vision is like a baby that is growing in our midst. And we need to differentiate when we receive a vision and when it is time to implement. So we need time for the baby to be fed by reading, by listening to something that stimulates us, by sharing with friends, by bringing other people of the church or the ministry with us. So it's a process and we need not to be too much in a hurry or too quick in that. And to make sure that the Holy Spirit will heal anything that needs to be dealt with in our own life first. Then we need to pray. Anything that is not based on prayer will not be solid and will not be long term. So it's important that to feed this vision that we bath it in prayer and that we pray for several times. I remember when we wanted to start a King's Kids group in Yverdon a few years ago, we were just three of us in the beginning and we started to meet once a month to pray together. But in between we were sharing about it with friends, with people we met. And I remember we were three the first meeting, we were five the second one, we were seven the third one, nine the fourth one. And when we started one year later, we were almost 20 staff that were here and that joined little by little in the prayer meeting. So this time of prayer is not a wasted time. It is so important. So really root your ministry in prayer and make sure that you spend enough time in the private room, in this place of intimacy with the Lord, where we listen to Him and receive His own vision to make sure that it's not just our own thoughts or our own project that we want to implement. Then calculate the cost. Wanting to start something is great, but it is harder to finish it. <laughs> so don't just start something if you, you just plan to be here for two years. You need really to implement something. When we started, we were here for five years, but we took people with us that we wanted to pass the leadership to. And it was so important. So make sure that you are committed for the long term, or at least for the next five years, I would say. You cannot start something if you are not committed. And Jesus himself was exhorting us, if you want to build a tower, first sit down and look if you have enough money to finish the building. Otherwise, people will mock you and look at you and say, this person was not um, thinking enough. So calculate the cost. Are you ready? Are you committed? Then share your vision with the pastors and with the elders, with the leaders of the church. 
it is so important. It's not your vision that you try to build in the church. You are part of something bigger. You are part of a body. You are part of a larger spiritual family. And you cannot just do what you want. You need to be in line with what God is doing in the larger church. That's why you need to share with your leadership first and be submitted to the timing. Maybe some of them are not ready for that. And I remember when we first shared about us taking over the children ministry, we felt that we had to invest in our pastors. We had two pastors. First, we offered a book to each one of our elders and pastors. And some of them were really touched by that. And they were excited and wanted to see this kind of thing happen in our church too. Then we prayed for our first pastor. And he went for a trip in the US, in Florida, to visit a church where there was a revival. And I don't know what happened. Actually, I know, but uh, on Sunday morning, he went into the wrong building and he was finding himself in the midst of the children worship service. And it was led by teenagers who were leading worship, preaching, emceeing. And our pastor, he was here and said, oh, but why not seeing how they are doing that here? He was so powerfully touched. When he came home, he said, this is what I want to see. <laughs> and we told him, we too, we want to see that. So we saw that God really spoke to him. And our second pastor, we invited him in one of our King's Kids weekend to share with the children. And he was so moved to see the children worshiping God, um, being committed, um, being uh, serving the Lord in different areas, answering to altar calls, receiving prayer, being filled with the Holy Spirit, exercising the gifts. He was so touched by that. And he told us, I want to see that also in our church. So it is important to take the time to win the heart of our leadership. And if it takes time, bless them. They have so many things, you know, to, when you have to lead a church, it is so large. And there are so many things you need to carry. So be patient and don't think that you are the main priority on their agenda. Just pray, love them, bless them and don't speak against them. It is so important. Be supportive. Then define a strategy. How do you want to go? For us, when we prayed, we, really, we received this strategy for five years. First two years, just serve, get to know the people. And we started to gather people in their age group and we invited them in our home so we can get to know each other. It was not only about business, it was also about building friendships, building relationships. And I remember some of the groups coming to our place and People looking at each other, oh, you are also in this group. <laughs> they were working with the same children, but they didn't know each other. Because they were just coming on Sunday, looking what was the theme of the day and quickly building something. So it is important that we start from the beginning. Then the third year we had this year of praying and seeking the Lord together with all those who wanted from the church. Or any parent, any child, any teenager the pastor or the elders, home group leaders, worship leaders, anyone who wants to be part of the process, you are free to join. It's an open process. It's not something that we try to design with a small group like a cult, you know, where we want to impose our own view. This is something we want to seek the Lord together. And if the vision is from the Lord, he will share this vision or aspects of the vision to anybody in the church. Because this is the Lord building his church. Then, make sure that you have an attitude of service. You are not here to control, to build your own kingdom, to dominate, to impose your view. You are here to serve. Even when you bring your vision, stay in an attitude of service. Serve people in what they need. Ministry, for most of the people, is not the main aspect of their life. They, they have a professional life with um, a work, with a boss, with colleagues, with pressures. They have a family, with a wife or husband. Uh, sometimes they are even alone to deal with their own children. And this is so huge. This is a big task. So having time to think about the ministry with children or any ministry is not always the first priority and is not always possible to give everything you can. 
And these people need to feel that you don't want just to use them to attain what you want, but that you are here to serve them, to protect them, to pray for them, to love them, to encourage them. So build in yourself this attitude of service, uh, like Jesus when he removed his um, towel and he washed the feet of his disciples. This is something that Jesus taught us. If me, the master, I'm doing that to you, so do the same for your fellow brothers and sisters. So we need to follow his example. Then, sow the vision as much as you can. Not always the same way. You can share something in a worship service in the morning or at the end in the announcement, in the church built-in. You can send emails with some information. It's not too long because you don't want to fed up people. And surprise them. Not that every time you come to the mic, they always switch on off and say, oh, he will again speak about the children we know. You know, surprise them and some, sometimes speak about other things. And it's a matter of inviting them into the vision. And communication, it is so important. Care for the relationships. When we started to share about the new vision we wanted to develop in our church, some people, they got, how can I say, disappointed. Oh, we always did like that. Why do you want to change? Of course, these were people that never came to the prayer meeting to seek the Lord. And when we had the evening where we announced how we would to change and start this worship service with children, they were really against us and they were really upset. Fortunately, we had both our pastors here, some of the elders, and they really supported us. And we said, but you were invited to build with us, but you never came. But they were so irritated. And I took the time to go and visit them at home to make sure that there was nothing that stayed between us that would hinder our worship to the Lord, our ministry, the offering that we would bring to the altar. So make sure that you take care for the relationship you speak and you don't let anything between you and your brother. Communication, relationship is the heart of the process. So make sure that you take care of this element. Then gather a core group of ministry. You cannot build the ministry with the whole church. You need to have some fellow people that are committed and you carry the main leadership together. Jesus is in two leadership teams. Uh, the Trinity, the leadership team, they work together, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And we need also to build teams around us so we don't do anything just by ourselves. So gather a team. For us, God showed us different people and we went to them, we shared with them, we invited them to pray. And we had two other couples joining us and one young girl, she, they came, we were a group of seven. And we met once a month together, eating together, praying together, sharing together, building the vision together and we're seeking the Lord together. Uh, as we were full time, if I can say like that, in ministry, we had more time than the others. So we were carrying much of the practical load, but we made sure that everyone was involved and carried some parts of the ministry also so they can own it. If people are not invited to carry it with you, they will not own the ministry. This will be your ministry. And this is one of the mistakes we did actually, because we started the ministry, the service with the children, and it became excellent. And you know, one of the effects was that we started to intimidate people around us because we were so good at doing it. And when we left finally, Actually, the five people that we trained to be with us, they also left. That was not planned, but two went for a DTS, two had some change uh, in their professional life and they had to move, another one was going into study. And we tried to anticipate everything and it didn't work the way we, we wanted. So we said to the church, so we need other people to come, but people were intimidated. They felt not as good as us. And when I thought about that, I said, oh man, in Ephesians, it's written that God has established ministries, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Why? To do the work of ministry? No, 
to train the body of Christ to do the work of ministry. And we did the ministry instead of training others to do it. We did a little bit of that, but we were not so focused on equipping the saints. We were doing, on doing the ministry ourselves, showing an example, modeling something. But we didn't realize that we started to intimidate people. So have a um, training mentality. In everything you do, see who can do it with you. And when can you um, pass on the leadership of this aspect of the ministry? So little by little, you, you make room for the others to take on responsibilities and to take your responsibilities. You need to identify priorities. You cannot do everything at the same time. So maybe some aspects of the ministry will not be very good, will be very poor actually, but you focus on that. And when that is established, you start to strengthen another part. And this is part of defining what are the priorities. And you can share about that with your church leadership, with your uh, team leadership also in the ministry. If you have only few workers, what can you do? This is important that you responsabilize the church. It is not just something that you need to do by yourself and sacrifice yourself because nobody else wants to do it. This is so important. I remember this person, she was leading the children ministry in a church in Geneva. And she told me, she was exhausted. She told me, Guy, I cannot quit. I'm the only one who's still there. So if I quit, the children will have no, nobody left. So she stayed, she was committed. And I told her, no, you need to leave. And you need to, to make a void. So people will feel the void. They will feel that it is uncomfortable because there is no more children ministry. They have to keep the children with them. And when people start to feel the void, they will come in. It's sometimes difficult because some people or some churches, they just rely on you. They lean on you and they let you carry all the load. So it is important that you may, when you don't have enough people, don't do it every Sunday. Make the void be felt by the community so they can be like an electroshock and they can react and start to get involved too. If it is a small community, of course, you may not have a worship service for every age group. It's not possible. Maybe you have one two years old one five years old, one nine years old, two teenagers. What do you do? It is not so easy when you have so many different age groups together and you need to build from the scratch a dynamic that is very much intergenerational where you can involve the teenagers to help you. You meet the teenagers maybe in private sessions where you coach them and mentor them in a more relational way and they get involved with you to help with the little children. So you can find a way, maybe it's not as dynamic, it's not as a big group with an old um, atmosphere that can be here, but you can build more in the relational aspect, and it is so important. If there is no room for the children, I remember being in Africa, I think it was in uh, Benin, and there was no room for the children. And we were doing something in the church and the kids were just on the balcony with just a curtain separating. And I said I want to speak to the kids in the afternoon, but during the same time the church was having a meeting. So there was all the sound system, full power in the hall. And I was on the balcony trying to shout to the kids. There were maybe 20, 30 kids in two or three rows. And I was shouting with all my strength. And I think only the first one was listening to what I was saying because there was so much noise. So sometimes it's a real challenge. It better be in the street, but when it's raining, it's not possible. So you need some creativity when you are with children because most of the time children are not the main priority. And in many churches, in many countries, there is no special room for the children. 
um, sometimes there is no finance for the children so you cannot build material you cannot build curriculum you cannot build sound system you cannot build what you need to do a good job but i want to tell you jesus didn't have a lot of money jesus didn't have a sound system he still spoke to five thousand people jesus didn't have big rooms he was on the trees he was on the street he was in houses private houses Jesus always found a way. And I want to tell you, the biggest need is, what is your vision? If the vision is burning in your heart, it will ignite something in you and it will birth creativity to find solutions to these diff different challenges that you have. So I really pray that the Lord can lead you. Bring changes with maturity. Bring changes with humility. Bring changes not in an arrogant spirit as if you have understood everything. No, you still need to learn a lot. Children ministry is not the only aspect of the church. There are many other things that are very important and you need to build together with the body where God has placed you. May the Lord give you this wisdom and patience and especially the spirit of prayer to nurture and feed the vision that God has put in your heart until it becomes true. God bless you. There is now a few questions that you can share together about. You can talk and pray with each other. If you have something in your heart for your own church, please pray for that and ask God to show you the right strategy to move little by little in that. Amen.